I'm Florence Gandillon. I'm a maritime hydraulic engineer uh, from the Artelia Group. Uh, so I'm not going to present you a detailed and precise study using Copernicus products because of problem of confidentiality. So I'm just going to present you global application and how we are using these products. So to begin a short presentation of Artelia. Artelia Group is an independent engineering project manager and consultancy uh, enterprise uh, which work in the following markets, building construction, water, energy, environment, transportation, urban development, industry, maritime, and multi-site projects. Uh, our services uh, are provided for public clients as local and regional authorities, ministries and government departments or public agency, as well as for private clients as big uh, industrial groups, uh, bank, insurance, architect, etc. and other engineering consultancies. Uh, in 2015, the turnover of the group amounted um, around 4,005 million of euros, um, divided in, uh, in our business in France in, and uh, our business uh, abroad. So we are 3,500 uh, employees. Um, working uh, in our regional offices in France or in uh, our offices uh, in other countries. And uh, Artelia is made up um, of four sectors, building construction and, this in, and industrial facilities, urban development and transportation, international and the water and environment sectors. So who in that big company are using Copernicus products and why? So obviously this is in the water and environment sector that we are using the product. Our business unit um, is the following, maritime and port business, dams, hydroelectricity, energy industry, water resources and natural risk. Uh, we are also involved in various uh, collaborative research projects and experts in uh, research and development governing bodies. Uh, our, um, the employees of water uh, and environment branch, um, the main part of the employees are located in Grenoble in the southeast of France. Uh, near Grenoble, we have also a ship handling training center and a huge hydraulics laboratory where physics, uh, physical models are set up. And uh, we have a little team, a maritime and numerical modeling team, specialized in uh, coastal environmental study and modeling studies. And this team of around 20, 20 engineers uh, use uh, the products and services from Copernicus. Uh, we are using the product of Copernicus since the beginning, since um, the previous project called MyOcean. Uh, it was in um, 2009, I think, or 2010. And we have downloaded our own automatic scripts <coughs> because at the beginning we don't have uh, all the tools uh, uh, we, we, we have now. And we have also developed our own Python routines to use uh, all the data. So to be a little more concrete, here is the value, uh, the product we, we are using. So we have models product um, as the global ocean one twelfth physic analysis and forecast model. Um, this is the product uh, the, the yeah, products we are using the main part of, uh, of the time. We are also using the <coughs> Renalysis Glories 2v3 and the Mediterranean Sea Physics Analysis and Forecast. We are also 
using observation um, as global ocean wind and global ocean physics temperature, salinity, ice and current processing. And we are looking uh, <coughs> since few times about the near real time observation project. But it's a new thing. So we are using the Copernicus projects for all our fields of application, sediment transport study, dredging activities, coastal management, dispersion, water quality, industrial facilities, but also marine renewable energies. <coughs> so we use the data on two different ways. Uh, first, we can analyze directly the data to describe, for example, ocean and meteorological condition of our site for our meteorological studies. And in a second way, uh, we use the data for uh, the coastal models we, uh, we are developed. Uh, so we have used uh, the Copernicus program uh, pro products for more than 20 studies. So maybe uh, this number could appear as a weak number, but trust me, according to the type of studies we are involved in, that's a quite important uh, <coughs> number. So I'm just going to describe you the two way of... Um, how we use the data. So first example, uh, so this is a description of uh, ocean and meteorolo meteorological condition of a site in order to estimate uh, the, the energetic potential of a site. Um, so this is statistical, um, st statistical analysis, profile of temperature, of salinity, uh, rose current and uh, wind current also. This is a, an example. Another example, uh, we study the, um, the, the Copernicus product uh, in order to define some exploitation scenarios in order to help our customer to define uh, where they can go on site, where they can uh, build uh, something along the, the, the coastline of or a bit offshore the coastline. This is another application. But the main part of the time we are using the product, the Copernicus product, as boundary or initial condition for our all coastal models in area where winds and global currents are the main driving forces. For example, in Mediterranean Sea, in Indian Ocean, in the tropical Atlantic Ocean. So what we, what we do, uh, so here is an example of a model developed by Artelia. So just to tell you, this is our grid of, um, our our grid of calculation offshore. Mm, does it work? How does it work? So offshore, the size of our mesh is around one kilometer or more than one kilometer in order to try to be uh, consistent with uh, the, product, the Copernicus project, um, which resolution is uh, around uh, seven or eight kilometers. And the size of our mesh decreases until uh, sometimes 10 meters along the coastline. So we are, this is not the same uh, sparse resolution than the Copernicus project. Um, and that's why we can use directly the Copernicus uh, project. Uh, so in, in our model, we imposed uh, wind, temperature and salinity sometime uh, in the surface layer here. Uh, we imposed along the maritime <coughs> boundaries uh, tide and water level, and we can also impose current temperature salinity <coughs> along the water column using the Copernicus project. <coughs> so just an example, this is a study in the, Go in the Guinea Gulf uh, for, um, for a coastal management study. Uh, so we have to build 
an hydrodynamics model and a sediment transport model. So to do that, our customer gave, um, gave us some measurements, of some coastal measurements. And the first step, uh, we had to calibrate our model. So we begin to impose as our boundary only water level and the depth average currents. And if we compare here the measure in blue line and our model in that line, we see uh, in two various layers that our model is not really good. It underestimates current and intensity. Uh, that's the same thing if we have a look in the order distribution of speed amplitude. Our model in gray point uh, only cash, catch the, the lower currents. And that's a big problem uh, for exploitation. So after various development, various calculation, we have imposed in our model 3D currents, temperature, salinity, uh, coming from Copernicus data, and also the wind. And if we now, if we compare the measurement, uh, the model with our measurement, we can see that the model is consistent with measurement, both for intensity here and here, for various layers, and in direction. So the, for us, the Copernicus product we used are a real uh, value added uh, for our study. It helps to improve uh, the level of our coastal study. And then, as our model is well calibrated, we can use it uh, for, uh, for exploitation and uh, answer the question of our uh, of customers. Um, so, but the strengths of the Copernicus platform as a user, I will say that it's a very good and user-friendly interface. Um, all data are the same point of access and free. So it's really interesting for us. We are confident in the data because there are lots of documentation, users' manuals, quality documents, and this point is really important for us because our customer, uh, our clients, always ask us, um, do you use um, data uh, validated? Uh, um, is the data you use are enough accurate? So that's really important for us to have that kind of documentation. We also appreciate the tutorials, the availability of the service desk. I would like to thank them because when we have questions, they always answer uh, quickly. Uh, and we, we also appreciate the constant evolution and all the improvements, new products, uh, the forum, the quality documentation. Some suggestion of improvement, <laughs> because uh, we want even more <laughs> and, uh, for our study. So at the moment, we are using the daily product uh, of the model, the Global Ocean uh, 112 model. Recently, uh, we have seen that at the surface layer, we can have a value each two hours. But in the future, we are really interesting uh, if having the value um, each hour, if it's possible, at various layers and not only on surface. And we are also really interesting to have long-term uh, period <coughs> in the past. So thanks to the presentation of this morning, I have my answer, so thank you. Um, uh, what about wave data? Uh, I think it's something uh, missing. Maybe. Um, so as I told you before, uh, we, we are looking now for the near real, real institute observation. And maybe it could be interesting to have, um, I don't know, an interactive map or something to, to, to watch the, the location of various observation, the types, the data available, uh, and to directly download uh, just the observation we, we want in the, in the chosen area. And another suggestion of improvement is about the <coughs> graphical tools. Uh, we can draw beautiful graphs <laughs> like that, but um, 
is it possible to, to export them uh, in, uh, I don't know, JPEG or PNG, um, PNG format? Uh, can we extract directly this data in, uh, I don't know, in the CDF format or binary format? It could be interesting, I think. But it's just a suggestion of improvement. So thank you for your attention.